Growing up in the peak really lends itself to solo climbing. You can just go out on like a, a nice evening and do loads of soloing at a really comfortable height and not have the exposure or, or fear and just get, get loads done. And that's where soloing essentially started for me. Living in the UK, we don't have any big wall climbing. It's only when you go over to the US that you really start to appreciate and see how big these granite cliffs are. When it first started and it was all going a, a bit drastically wrong, I was thinking, why, why am I doing this? Yeah. You sort of push on there, don't you? And overcome the mistakes. Free climb El Cap anyway is like a difficult challenge. The El Cap has never been fully free climbed in a day by somebody, you know, on their own. What's my name? My name's Pete Whittaker. <laughs> the plan is to free climb El Cap in a day by myself. El Capitan is a 3,000 foot wall of granite, one of the biggest big walls in the world. Walk up to the base, boom, massive sheet of granite just coming straight out of the ground. And it seems to almost tower over the top of you and is leaning towards you. It's just the biggest piece of rock you've ever seen. It just totally intimidates you. It's massive. Nearly everyone I ever climbed on a big wall with, they all said that big wall climb like, was terrifying and intense and technical. Once you step onto it and you're basically abandoned in this ocean of rock and you look above and you look at how far you've already come and that's when you really appreciate how hard it is. Free rider, it's an absolute classic route. Great free climbing, follows a really obvious crack system and corner system. It's like the easiest freeway up El Cap. Free climbing El Cap is one of the hardest things that most trad climbers or sport climbers will ever do in their lives. If someone free soloed El Cap, you'd be like, that's that's pretty impressive. If someone rope soloing it, free climbing, like, that's really impressive. And when it comes to rope soloing, free climbing, like, that is like the worst, you know, that is the worst thing. It looks so manageable on paper, but when you combine so many hard pitches of climbing together with no, no break at all, and ever increasing exposure and ever increasing fatigue, it's really, really hard. If it was like free climbed solo, then people would think it was amazing. But to do it like that is almost as, it's not as, it's not as like completely insane and ballsy 
but the amount of effort to do it well and safe is way more than just like rocking up and like you know free climb to the top rope soling is a really niche area to climbing and not many people know about it and even less people do it so many unusual elements to it you can't compare it to all the other styles of climbing on el cap or normal free climbing You're kind of making it even harder for yourself really by using all those ropes and things but the problem is as if pete pulled it off no one would even get it no one would even understand how hard it was. The difference with this style of climbing compared to going with a partner. Tie the rope at the bottom and you climb up, taking, putting the gear in and you're belaying yourself. And when you get to the top, you grab yourself back down the rope, taking all the gear out. And you climb back up the rope with all the gear, pull up the rope, stack it, start again. So basically you have to cover the ground three times. Free climbing, abseiling and jumaring. So essentially in a day, you're trying to free climb El Cap, abseil the whole of El Cap, and then Jumar the whole of El Cap. I spent a lot of time studying the route, studying the details of the pictures, trying to collect a different beta and knowledge before setting off. I've known Pete for about 10 years now, and we've been climbing together for most of that time. When I first met him, he was about 16 years old, but it really did stand out that he was up for challenges straight away because one of the first things we did was a big 24-hour challenge in the Peak District with lots of soloing. I like to challenge myself. It doesn't even have to be climbing. It can be riding unicycles. Or it can be, or it can be climbing, or it can be cooking, or it can, you know, anything. Anything that I do, it's got to be a challenge. It's got to be hard. Uh, and then I've got to complete it at the end. Me and Pete have obviously done a lot of climbing together, a lot of really hard challenges, especially the 24-hour ones that have been absolutely back-breaking and required a lot of preparation and a lot of physical effort. And I've climbed with Pete for many, many years. This is the first time where I've thought, I'm just not going to be able to do that. And in all honesty, I don't even have the appetite to try that challenge because it feels that hard. And, and I don't like to be defeatist, but this is the first time where I've gone... I just couldn't do it and in all those years of climbing if that's the case then I think that really stands out as being something quite a bit harder. The idea of doing it in a day is like totally insane. There's this tradition of what you can do in a day, how much climbing you can do in a day. I think a day is just a good length of time. You can absolutely batter yourself in a day. Start wherever you want but achieve it in 24 hours. It sounds doable but it's really freaking hard. There must only be like 10, less than 20 people who ever soloed El Cap in a day in any way, any way, shape or form, like free, like free and aid and all aid. And to solo El Cap in a week doing a free climbing every single pitch, to take your time, it would be like pretty hardcore. But to suddenly accelerate all that stuff, the lack of sleep, the, the, the physical strain of free climbing every single pitch. Who, apart from you know, Tommy Caldwell, has like just gone and led every single pitch from the ground to the top? Like, I can't really think of anybody who does that. Is that thing about soloing is just, you're setting off at like seven in the evening or something, and you know you are not going to stop for one second, not one second, for like 24 hours. Problem is with El Cap, once you start up, you're like committed. I think the first thing when I, Pete told me about his plan to do it was probably, you're absolutely mad. When I first started uh, rope soling, I didn't really know what I was doing. I'd practice on some single pitch routes and basically like the belay device would be getting stuck. Um, I'd have like loads of rope drag from all the spare rope at the bottom. Um, I'd be getting confused with which rope I was clipping into where. There's a really bad situation where I was on a really windy crag and I was above the gear and I'd clipped the wrong rope in. I was like, this doesn't look right. Squamish I thought was the proving ground on whether this whole thing was possible. Squamish was definitely a, a massive learning curve. Really thirsty. Jesus. That's because I forgot to fill up my drinks bottle. Everybody's gone to bed. 
I'm halfway up the chief. As you can see, my rope got stuck and I only just made it to the top there. <laughs> you kind of learn quickly when you're by yourself and you're making these mistakes because you don't want to do it again because it's just a complete nightmare. I did go, oh man, is he sure he really knows what he's letting himself in for on this? Yeah, Pete. I met Pete out in Squamish and he was doing all these routes. I would say I'm a very, like, a very optimistic person. Like, I've taken people up big walls in Antarctica who'd never been climbing in their lives and, you know, blind people, people with ginger hair. But when Pete was like, I want a solo El Cap, I was like, well, you probably could do it. You're good on, on the Salathe, you're good at cracks. Blah, blah. And he said, no, I want a rope solo. I was like, no way, mate, no way. I was like, just suddenly, like, concerned. Like, do you realise how much work it is? I really felt really bad about it, that I wasn't like, go for it, Pete, go for it. Did that give you confidence in your ability to do freerider? No. <laughs> But then I, then I started hearing that Pete had done like like two walls and then three walls and then like I guess I guess I had like more confidence that he could do it. So I'm just back down at the bottom of the slabs. I guess it's about quarter to five maybe. It's all going well so far apart from I had to make an intermediate belay down there because the roots got stuck on like the second pitch. It's going right so far. So here on Heart Ledge, and I think that took me three and a half hours. It's actually quite good fun doing the lead climbing element of it. You really feel in your own little bubble, your own space, and when you get into the groove of it, it's actually pretty amazing, and maybe even better than climbing with, a, with another person. But when you add in the fact you have to go and clean the pitch, and then Jumar afterwards, and then you have the cumulative fatigue that kicks in after pitch, after pitch, after pitch, then you really have to suffer. So, I don't know what time it is, but I'm at the monster Oh god. Oh god. I have to say. I'm starting to feel tired already. Jesus. This is gonna be freaking hard. Freaking hard. around pitch 20 that I really started to feel tired and struggle. I guess your body wants to fall asleep. Um, the monster off with was harder than I'd wanted it to be. If you're constantly 
racing to try and go faster. But at the same time, each move and each pitch that you do, you're just getting more and more exhausted. You're fighting that exhaustion. I tried solo El Cap, I ended up taking like 30 hours and I've never felt so alone and so isolated from the rest of humanity as like our, our, you know, our 27 with no water, no food, one rope, you know, like still, you know, 200 meters to go. Mm -hmm. right. You have to have a really strong mental attitude to be able to not think that you're defeated by it all and just focus on every step and just putting one foot in front of the other. <sighs> now I've just got to keep pushing on. Keep pushing on. Crikey. Oh, it is coming light. Don't know if that's good or not. I'm just going to have to see how this goes. I've been climbing the whole way through the night, like 12 hours of complete darkness, at the Boulder Problem Pitch. It just started to come light and the sun's coming up. You've done these off widths and these chimneys, and then suddenly you're into really hard, like face climbing. Standing on small edges, pulling on small crimps, weird little thumb sprags, you know, very body position-y. It's the hardest pitch on the whole route. When you're doing it with somebody else, you've shared the load basically. Somebody else does, you know, part of the hauling. They belay you. They take some of the leads. Whereas going by yourself, you have to do everything. You have to belay yourself, clean the pitches yourself. If you're going for multiple days, you have to haul yourself. You have to work out all the moves yourself. 
basically just do everything yourself and it just seemed like much more of a challenge um, doing it on my own so that's why I wanted to do it, a challenge I am at the Sous Le Trois ledge and I have two really hot pitches coming up I don't know what I don't know why. I, don't, I actually don't know why. Like why do people sail around the world by themselves? It's just like setting yourself this impossible, you know, it's that feeling of being independent of anybody else and you get to do everything yourself. Like it's all you have it all. Like time trial, like the second, like, am I going too fast? Am I going too, going too slow? Am I going to burn out? Uh, you know, like, you, something goes wrong. I've just wasted 20 minutes. I'm going to bail. No, don't bail. Keep going. And that, just this massive mental game. When you're physically and mentally exhausted, that's when it essentially starts to get really, really difficult. Pizza Scent will have its place in the history books because it was the first time that it's been done in this style on El Cap. All free, in a day, on an established El Cap route. Made it to the top. Oh, I, can, I can barely do anything. So tired. History always looks back at these verses and says that was the kind of the cutting edge thing. 
And when people cross that threshold of thinking this is even possible, people will go, that was the first time it's done. Now we're trying to aspire to matching that or trying to improve on it. Just trying to find that balance of what is possible and what's not possible. So tired. Absolutely hideous at the end. It was quite close to the limit of whether I was going to do it, but at the same time, like, I still got to the top. And if there had been more pitches after that, then I feel like I could have done more pitches. So, in that way, maybe it wasn't quite hard enough. 